Hi, my name is John Holland. I'm an art teacher at John B. Carey Elementary. My kids call me Dr. H and my, studio, my classroom is called the Learning Studio. Today we're gonna to talk about what makes an object art or not art. For example, what makes the painting behind my shoulder there, what makes that art? As opposed to what makes a banana art? We'll find out some more and learn about a couple different things, including some cross-curricular connections between sociology and art, and some, a variety of art movements and artists across time from the 1500s to just last year. So here we go. I'm gonna get my presentation up, so hold on a second. <clears throat> So the title of this lesson is called Making the Familiar Strange. I invite you to come into this lesson. If you're a dreamer, come in. If you're a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer, if you're a pretender, come sit by my fire for we have some Flax golden tails to spin. Come in, come in. And our, our learning objective for today is a student will describe the difference between art and non-art objects. Connection between art and sociology happens all the time. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the concept or the uh, theory of sociological imagination. Sociology is, a uh, combination of two roots, uh, Latin socius, or meaning companion, and ology, meaning knowledge. When you look at, <clears throat> C. Wright Mills said that if you look at society as if it were strange, you can learn some new things. We're also going to be talking about the cognitive domain of creativity that includes imagination and originality, flexibility, and decision making. So let's talk about this painting. If you can, you can click on the form that's uh, listed with the, other, the additional resources and complete it. All you have to do is fill it out with what your opinion is after, uh, after we talk about it. So what's familiar about this painting? I kind of doubt that there's anything in this painting that you haven't necessarily seen before. Like, that it's, uh, it's, it most likely is not alien. There's a, I see, let me see, see some of the thing, describe some of the things I see. I see clouds. I see something that looks like water or a atmospheric horizon. I see some um, stone, a stone wall, uh, someone in a coat with a red tie, a white shirt, a hat, and an apple. But the question is, what makes, <clears throat> what, may, what What is it that makes this image strange? You probably have your own answers. I'm going to let you go ahead and think about that. The last question here is, what might this question be about? I mean, I'm sorry, what might this picture be about? Well, the, one of the uh, neat things about art is that it's often made by artists to have of multiple levels, which is why it can, one of the reasons why it can reflect society. The title of this painting is Son of Man. So if you are uh, looking at this painting and then you know the title, you might realize, hmm, maybe this is talking about that apple. Why is that apple in his way? So if you get a chance, please fill out the form below. It's important that when you're learning something that you express what you're thinking, otherwise it just slips away. Go ahead and pause the video and fill out your form. Here's another painting by uh, Rene Magritte. This painting is, um, we're going to talk about this painting. 
So the same sort of questions. What is familiar about this painting? Well, it looks like it's some sort of a pipe and it has some sort of writing that I can't necessarily read on it. What makes this, what makes this image seem strange? Well, at first glance, it doesn't seem that strange. Maybe if I figure out what those words say. Ceci ne sait pas on est pipé. That's French. It means this is not a pipe. Wait a minute. This is not a pipe? But it's a picture of a pipe. It is a pipe, right? Or maybe it's not. I wonder what Rene Magritte's saying in this, with this painting. This is not a pipe. Maybe he's saying that it's a picture of a pipe and not really a pipe. Hmm. Or maybe I need to look for some more, some more information. When I looked this picture up on the, on the internet and I found it, I learned that the title of this painting from 1929 is The Treachery of Images. So if we think about that term, treachery, treachery it has to do with tricking or lying and this treachery treachery of images i wonder what he's trying to say think about it for a minute maybe talk to it with you with a, a, an adult or with your friends so when we consider the the cognitive domain of creativity when we use flexibility to look at an object with a new perspective, we can unlock ourselves from how we see the world. Sort of like Magritte's picture. This is not a pipe. We can unlock ourselves because we, when we learn that what those French words mean, it makes us think, if this is not a pipe, what is it? Then, if we make a decision about how to share that, our perspective, we can create artwork with imagination and originality. If, the, if Rene Magritte had painted a pipe, but he hadn't written, this is not a pipe, would it be the same painting? I kind of doubt it. And in a way, it's almost like a, like a joke. If you show someone a picture of a pipe, and then you tell them, this is not a pipe, it makes us think, well, what is it if it's not a pipe? This is the one way that we create ver art versus non-art objects. We're not making value judgment as to whether an object is good art, only if it is an object that qualifies in art today. Let's look at something else from another perspective. Here's another uh, art piece of artwork called One in Three Chairs by Joseph Kosuth. This artwork is in the uh, Museum of Modern Art in New York. It includes a uh, real chair, a photograph of a chair, and a definition of chair displayed next to each other. So you might ask, well, what makes, it a, what makes this art? If that chair was in a restaurant, it would be a chair, but it's not in a restaurant. It's in a museum. So that's one clue as to what makes something art. Maybe it's the context. There's also, with this artwork, it has uh, an image of the, of the chair. And it has the definition of chair. I wonder if he's saying that they're all chairs, but they're all different kinds of chairs, even though they're really the same chair. Hmm, makes me think. This artwork's from 1965, during the conceptual art movement. The work of Rene Magritte was first came about during the Surrealist movement from the 30s to the 50s. Here's an artwork by one of my students. She said, it looks like it's looking at me. I shared, the, I shared the, this, this assignment, make something familiar strange. And this is the picture that she took and sent back to me. If it was a tree just out in the woods, it might just be a tree in the woods, but 
because she took a picture of it and sent it to me. Now it's become art. And to me, I can see that it looks like it's looking at me too. This is an artwork by my, by my student, Laura. Lauren took this picture of just everyday objects around her house. When I first saw this picture, I thought, wow, I've never, what is that? It took me a while. She talked about how it was a, 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 light, a light that she had taken with some perfume on it. But the thing that I really liked about it was it wasn't, not only was it something that was familiar that was made strange, but it also had a composition that made my eye move around the picture. So am I saying everything is art? Mm, not necessarily. I don't think everything is art, but here we are, back to the banana. This banana was duct taped to a wall and it sold for $120,000, titled Comedian by Maurizio, Maurizio Catalan. Now, this has gotta be art, doesn't it? Well, let's think about what happened. If we, at some point, Catalan, um, Maurizio Catalan must have thought, maybe this banana could be art. If I put it in a gallery, or I change the context from the grocery store to this gallery, maybe it would be art. But then he added another layer. This is one of the fun things about art is that you can add more and more layers to something, either physically with painting, drawing, or with the title. He called it the comedian. Sorry, comedian. Now, this is definitely saying something. Is Maurizio saying he's a comedian? Or is it referencing the, an old vaudeville skit in which somebody slips on a banana pill? I wonder, what does it take for something to be art or not art? Well, if we look at the world and we take something from the world and then we make some decisions about it, I think that this might be really the most important part. If we observe and make a decision and then share it with the world, so an object can become art even a banana. But then we have something else. This is David Detuna. He's a performance artist. Maurizio Catalan said, here's a banana, I'll tape it to the wall. This is art. And somebody must have believed him because they bought it for $120,000. Now, here comes David Datuna. Let's see what he does. Art performance. Art performance. Hungry art. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We respect Mauricio, but it's art performance, hungry art in the gallery. Thank you, very good. <laughs> so, now we really have a dilemma. David Atuna has just eaten a piece of art. Is it still art? Well, let's see if it meets that criteria that we already set. Um, what was he, what did he do? Well, he found that banana, the artwork sitting on the wall in the gallery and he thought to himself, maybe if I change, is it art or is it a banana? And then he made a decision. He was gonna break the unofficial rules of don't touch the artwork. Now, one of the things about performance artists is they're always breaking rules like that. But the main thing is, he made the decision to make it art when he said, this is performance art. And then he added even one more layer. He said it was titled, Hungry Artist. A hungry Artist has really 
kind of clever because he says it's a hungry artist, but also there is an old story or an old, uh, there's a, there's an archetype of the artist as being starving, a starving artist, as in artists never make money. So it seems like he turned that whole story on his head. So today, we're gonna try to look at some artwork, I mean, make, make some artwork out of something familiar, maybe food. This is some artwork by an Italian artist, Giuseppe Arcamoldi. He was a painter for the court and he made lots of religious and uh, official court paintings, really nice uh, portraits. But he also liked to, tell, liked to make some of these humorous um, looking paintings that used fruit and vegetables in place of the person. So we're, fi we're faced with this dilemma. What makes something art? For our project today, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna need to find some material. So you can pause at this screen if you'd like. Some sort of images, whether it's newspaper, magazines, or glue, uh, magazines, and we'll need some glue and some scissors. Now, you may not have all of these uh, things right now, so go ahead and get them. And then you can use some optional materials too later. But let's just get started. So newspaper, a magazine, scissors, and glue. We're going to look at whatever we've gathered together with flexibility. We're going to make some decisions like what colors or what kind of objects we're going to select from our environment. And then when we're going to put it all together and present it. Now we're ready to start our project. I have three short videos to show that will show some of the processes that, and thinking that can go on with this, with this project. Okay, so now we're ready to start our project. Gathered the materials I need, stick of glue or some regular glue, a pair of scissors, and uh, just a piece of plain paper. I found an old piece of typing paper, I mean, um, printer paper that has some information on it that I don't need anymore. You can use anything. And I've also gathered together some uh, newspapers. This is a newspaper that's basically put in my front yard once a week. And um, it has plenty of images in it that we can use. Uh, I'm, I've just made the decision to look for um, colors. So I'm looking for reds, for blues and reds, maybe some greens. And I'm also looking at uh, some fruits, vegetables, different, um, different types of uh, food. And my plan is to um, do something with this collection once I've, once I've uh, went through the paper and gathered them together. It's a pretty simple process to, um, to collect your images. Um, you just make, like I said, you make a decision about what you want to use. You use your best skills at cutting to uh, edit or crop the image and just set it aside. My plan is to um, select enough color and paper to color this whole, um, to cover the entire eight and a half by 11 paper. I don't want any white paper showing on my artwork. Um, if you were at school with me in, at Cary, you would know that um, in general, I don't ever expect your artwork and my artwork to look the same. We're all trying to do our own best work. If you're picking out um, images and maybe you have a you have a fashion magazine or you have a Sports Illustrated magazine, your images are going to look different than mine, and you're going to be selecting um, colors or objects that are different. If you're looking at Sports Illustrated, you may decide to only use the colors in team jerseys, or you may 
decide to only use um, one particular sports images. <clears throat> using fashion magazines, you may decide to do something only with people's faces. Um, it's up to you. So once I've uh, gathered enough materials, I will um, start on the project. I'm going to take a pause and uh, collect, collect some more images and colors and then start back up when I'm ready to, to arrange things. All right. That's the first part. This part, I'm uh, using the, the colored blue paper that I had found and putting them all together as a background. 